Daniel chapter 2, let's read from verse 19. I'm reading verse 19 all the way to 23. Daniel 19 to 23. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19 to 23. I hope we have the tombs nailed for the sermon I want to preach as well. Okay. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. It says, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a ninth vision. Then Daniel did what? Let's read together. Bless the Lord God of what? Of heaven. Verse 20. Let's read. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and what? And ever. For wisdom and might are his. Verse 21. It changed the times and the seasons. It removed kings. And set it up kings. It giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know what understanding. Verse 22. He revealed the deep and secret things. Please, I want you to mark reveal the deep and secret things. If your Bible is not rented, leased, mortgaged, or borrowed, or stolen, as long as it's rightfully yours, mark. Reveal the deep and secret things. Mark it, then we're, then we're going to reread that verse. Mark it. Have you marked it? Now we're going to reread it. We're at Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. Now, once you go, let's carry on. Reveal it, what? The deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the what? I want you to mark the word know it. Mark the word knoweth. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. How much? See what I carry on. He says, and the light dwelleth in him. And um, let's read the last verse, 23. It says, I thank thee. Let's say, let's read together. I thank thee and what? Praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has what? Given me what? Open your mouth and fire a word. Who has given me what? Wisdom. Wisdom and might. Please mark the word. Thank thee, praise thee, wisdom and might. This word will be pivotal to the teaching tonight. Who has given me wisdom and might and has what? Made known unto me. Now, what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known what? Unto us the king's matter. Father, we thank you for the reading of the word. In Jesus' name. I bring you a word charge titled, Dangers of Prophecies. Dangers of Prophecies. Dangers of Prophecies. That's the message tonight. So it's not just, I am not here to preach, I'm here to teach. Dangers of Prophecies. People are sending their questions online already. Keep sending your questions. We will deal with them at the end of the message. But please, in the meantime, please listen to this because this message I want to preach and I want to teach and touch on tonight is the confession of the church today. Dangers of prophecies. Child of God, I specially prepared a two-line introduction statement to my message, which I don't. What is my introduction statement? The Lord said, one of the most powerful, if not the most oldest, liberating and anointed ministry is the prophetic. But yet, it is extremely deadly. One of the most powerful, if not the oldest, 
liberating and most anointed ministry is the prophetic ministry. But yet, it is extremely deadly. A ministry when not engaged rightly or understood rightly. I repeat that one more time. Please, wherever you are, physically or virtually, please understand what I want to teach tonight. I repeat it one more time. The Lord said, one of the most powerful, if not the oldest liberating and anointed ministry is the prophetic ministry. But yet, it is extremely deadly and dangerous, very extremely deadly and dangerous ministry, ministry, if not engaged or engaged properly or understood. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, verse 12, verse 13, through to 14. The Bible says, And to some he gave apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and what? Teachers. If you look at verse 12, it says, For the perfecting of what? The saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. If you move on to verse 13. It says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. And look at verse 14. And that says, That we henceforth be no more children. Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sleet of men and cunning and cunning craft, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. If we stop there and I break something down, if you look at Ephesians 4:12, the gift of divinity to humanity. Is the operations of the fivefold ministry. I said that um, breaking down the five, teachers are who? They work with insights. They are blessed. The teaching ministry is a ministry that carries insights into the world. The pastoral office is the office of what? Foresight. F O R E sites. The evangelistic ministry is the ministry that operates through the charge of the insight. I, sorry, hind sites. H I N D sites. The prophetic was with what? Foresight. Sorry, so the, past, the pastoral works with the over, uh, over, oversight. Oversight pastoral. Prophet, prophetic ministry works with foresight. And the apostolic work with what? Long sight. Now, the prophetic working with foresight, meaning the prophetic deals with matter from the future was operating in the now. This is why the prophetic ministry is so pivotal for the direction of every ministry or every church. If a church don't have a genuine prophetic voice and a genuine prophetic eyes, that church will be stuck at a bus stop that will lead many members into frustration, depression, confusion, stagnation, and depression. I did not just use, I didn't say, a pro, I didn't say prophetic eyes or prophetic mouth. I said a genuine now, the problem is we are in a generation and a dispensation where many don't know 
the difference between a prophetic voice that is genuine and a prophetic voice that is not genuine. Jesus said it is by the spirit in the person. Now the Bible says now that to know a, 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 there, is no, there is no genuine prophet that will prophesy without the acknowledgement of Christ. A genuine voice that is prophetic speaks, thus says the Lord, and in the time of life, there must be what? Manifestation. Jesus said, if the word manifests, you know I have sent him. Now, I'm going somewhere tonight. Despite all of this, thus says the Lord, by this time of life, you will be with a child. Thus say the Lord, by this time of life, this nation will do this, and that nation will, this will happen to these people, and that tribe will experience this. Listen, above all of this, the prophetic ministry is meant to draw you closer to Jesus. It's meant to mature you through the nurturing sight of the prophet. The most important operations of the prophetic ministry is to see your spiritual destiny and guide you into it. But believers are so consumed with their materialistic ambition. So all the desire from, a, from the eyes of a prophet or from the mouth of a prophet is direction to material gains. So many prophets now, or let me say now, we're having wolves wearing the prophetic mantle. Businessmen, the Bible tells us, businessmen who are slit men, S-L-E-I-G-H-T, -S slit men wearing, wearing the prophetic mantle. They're carrying cunning craft onto the altar, now feeding on the greed of the church, the greedy ambitions of some believers. And they are misleading them away from purpose. Any prophecy you receive that don't eventually lead you to your godly destiny is from the pit of hell no matter how articulated the man is. The dangers of prophecies. As much as prophecy is liberating. As much as prophecy is electrifying. As much as prophecy is lifting. As much as prophecy lightens your body, as much as prophecy brings direction, one thing you must know about prophecies, prophets, and the prophetic ministry is the dangers that it carries. And I want to deal with those dangers tonight to bring us to a place of maturity. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 and verse 14, having received the gift of the fivefold, the Bible says it's meant to bring about edification. And after we have been edified, we will no longer be tossed to and fro like babies through the erratic and wrong doctrine that has been shared by slit men looking for wicked gains from the church. The dangers of the prophetic. What is the word danger? What is the word danger? Danger can be defined as the possibility of suffering harm or injury. The possibility of suffering harm or injury. I see that the message is getting intense. People are taking off jackets. <laughs> They're getting hot. The possibility of what? Suffering harm or injury. Danger can be defined further, can be further defined as hazard, peril, jeopardy, imply harm that one can that one may encounter. Let me give you some synonyms of the word danger. If you want to write this down, I got some synonyms. Risk. Every time you receive a prophecy, you are at risk. I will explain it somewhere, I'll break it down. Peril, hazard, jeopardy, jeopardos, pitfall, confusion, threat, catastrophe, difficulty, fear, vulnerability. Now watch this. 
Danger, synonyms for danger can also be called between a rock and a hard place. Between skiller and what? This one is very hard. Cherub cherubdis. Between Silla and Cherubdis. Now, I picked two, two important words which are also the synonyms of the word danger. I picked these two because it's what I see people go through in the church. And what are these two words? Confusion and vulnerability. One of the dangers of prophecies is leaves a lot of people in further confusion instead of bringing direction. One of the dangers of prophecies is how it makes believers become vulnerable than they were former, they, they, they formerly were. Wrong prophecy exposes you. It uncovers vulnerability in your walk with God. Even when you receive a right prophecy that is so powerful, you become vulnerable by the reason of what you received. Thus says the Lord, in 10 years you will be a, you will be a, a, a fire preacher preaching to hundreds of thousands. Already you are now vulnerable. You are, you are vulnerable to the devil's attack. How many of you have um, experienced something? Let me break it down to you. Where you receive, Before you receive a prophetic word, nothing is to happen. The moment you receive a word, bam, you start getting attacks. I'm going to deal with those things tonight. The dangers of prophecies. The dangers of prophecies. The dangers of prophecies. It's time for us to go back to what matters to God. Now, what is prophecy? What is prophecy and what is the prophetic? In this ministry, you can't be under a prophet by the grace of God and apostle and teaching anointing here and some, someone is bamboozling you on the road. What is prophecy? Prophecy is speaking into the future whilst in the now. Through divinity's charge and order. Speaking into the future whilst in the now. Through divinity's charge and order. Bringing humanity into God's agenda. Did you catch that? This one, this comment is coming from Jehovah's Library. Prophecy is speaking into the future. We didn't write this one; it's coming, it's flowing. Prophecy is speaking into the future, whilst in the what? In the now. Through divinity's charge and order. Therefore, bringing humanity into God's what? Agenda. I want that definition because I didn't write it. I also want it. I'll repeat that one more time for those who are missing words. Prophecy. Is speaking into the future whilst in the now through divinity's charge and divinity's order. D O D O R D E R, an order. Therefore, bringing what? Humanity, what? Into what? Into God's what? Agenda. Any prophet that speaks without a charge to speak. Any prophet that speaks without an order from divinity will mislead humanity. 
Meaning prophets are mini gods. They are deities. That's why prophets are called God's oracles. Prophets are those that God give access into a special part in the realms of the spirit and their past is what we call seeing eyes. That's why prophets, we see things you don't see. Hence the reason why I work with the foresight. The foresight. If we understand these things, we will not be bamboozled. Prophecy is different from word of knowledge. The devil is very good at word of knowledge. But the devil cannot prophesy. Uh, let me break some things to you tonight. The devil cannot prophesy because the devil has no key to the future. The devil can predict but cannot prophesy. It's only God that uses his prophets to prophesy. A necromancer, an astrologer, a stargazer, they can predict the future, predict your life. But only a prophet can prophesy. Because why? They speak with authority based on Jehovah's charge and all that, following what God has given them access to see concerning the future. They're, they're by bringing humanity into God's agenda for the future. What's in the now? I'm going somewhere. Are you, is, am I breaking down step by step? Any prophet that speaks without God says speak. That's why prophets say, thus says the what? The Lord. And you finish by saying, as the Lord liveth, so shall it be. You put a seal. A prophet's seal is the name of the Lord. Any prophecy not sealed with the, the, with, with, with the signet of the king cannot manifest. The prophet has spoken of himself. That is why Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 2, verse 22, it says, He revealed the deep and secret things. Daniel ascribed their glory to God who revealed and seek. No prophet has access to the deep and secret things without act, without pass from the one called he, meaning hello him. No one has passed into the deep and secret thing without Jehovah's involvement. Without Jehovah's involvement, no prophet can see the deep and secret things. Daniel 2.22, he revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth in him. Child of God, a prophet who is not in God, don't carry light to, 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 to see what is in the darkness. Every genuine prophet also write this. Blesses the name of the Lord through ministration. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. And Daniel, answered, and Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God. Every genuine prophet blesses the name of God through ministration. Not major one, not major 20, not emeritus, not papa. Papa, do it, do it, do it. You are healing the man. Daniel received access into deep and secret things. And the Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 2, give me 10 to 10. And Daniel chapter 2 verse 19, verse 20, verse 21 and 22. Bible says, and Daniel blessed the Lord. He says, blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the name of God forever. Blessed be the name of God forever. For wisdom and might are his. The wisdom of a prophet is given by God. Listen, the word wisdom, see, we prophets don't carry the kind of wisdom you have. 
let me break this thing down to you. In the prophetic ministry, definition of wisdom is not what you know wisdom as. My, wis my level of wisdom is not what you, you, can't, you, you don't have it. That is why the Bible tells us about people like Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh. In their kingdom, they had wise men. Wise men, the wisdom of the prophetic ministry is your ability to navigate deep and secret things, understand them, then after analyzing them, then you interpret them to humanity. Meaning, you can tell me about your dream now that you saw a snake. A snake came and a snake st st stood by, st called by your feet. And shed the skin there. Ha, ah, prophet! My own is finished. Ah, as I was sleeping, one snake came, shed skin. Hey, prophet! This is bad omen. But the prophet sits down, looks at it, and says, No, congratulations. Prosperity has come. It takes a different type of wisdom to interpret such picture. That's the wisdom we're talking about there. For wisdom and might. For wisdom and might are is. Not Papa, Mature, Emeritus. All these slit men, slit men, slit, the Bible calls them slit, they are thieves. Eh? Imagine I'm prophesying to someone. You start saying, ha! Hey, 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 hey! Do something, Papa! Do something! I will sound you with the microphone. Before you kill me before my time. True prophets of God, they know their place before God. Because they know God without them, and God not backing them, their eyes go short. They lose their sight. The reason why these men seem to be doing very well, metal, but prophet, his ministry is growing. Child of God, go on. Many of these men, they walk with the spirit of what? Knowledge. That is not prophecy. The devil can walk with the spirit of knowledge to prophesy to you. To sp uh, supposedly prophesying to you. Word of knowledge is not prophecy. Word of knowledge is not prophecy, child of God. What is your name? Where are you from? You see me do it many times here. I call people's names. Does that change their life? Eh? You wear white boxers. Gray stripe. The, what does it change? Boxers and stripe. Does it give you money to, in the bank? You had can care and fry fish this morning. Word of knowledge is ah do so go deeper, deeper, deeper. You are saying, sir. Yes, 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 yes. And people, people will be falling in and out of devil. Say it's the Holy Ghost. Excitement is not the same as Holy Ghost involvement. Excitement is not the same as oligolistic involvement. Everyone who's watching online, please, I want you to listen to this. How do you know genuine prophets? How about Labalaga? Again, write this point. Any prophecy that is not in line with scripture is not God. There is, a, there is one small boy in London. I won't mention his name. They are very irrelevant. Carry beer, beer like someone that needs to be flogged. Hmm? His wife dressing like someone that is looking, look, looking for st strippers bar contract. That is the one the youths are following. People that are prophesying and saying the church have nine years. Nine years. Who told you what the, how many years the church have? 
Pastor Chris Oyakilome was saying that in 10 years' time, 10 years, Jesus is coming. What a devil. They should have carried battery and thrown his face in the, in the studio. That's not a prophet. That's a devil. Slit men. Don't be impressed by their title or their achievement. Achievement don't move God. You can never out-achieve God. So achievement don't move him. Oya Kilemo said, 10 years, Jesus is returning. Who told him that devilish revelation? And people were there shouting, Papa. The prophetic ministry is meant to edify the body of Christ. Bringing us into maturity. Becoming kingdom entities on earth. Nobody's asking questions anymore. Although you easily know them by what they say. I prophesy about nations and I always stand by what I say. I st always stand by it. Because if I say it, I would have said, Lord, is this really you? It's not about impressing. We don't prophesy to trend. We prophesy to bring humanity into God's end. Oh, yeah, Ten years! Who gave him that word? One small boy in London here yeah, calling himself a prophet. They will go there, they'll be speaking, speaking English like the devil is impressed your English. And, and God told me, in the realms of the spirit, and he caught me, and he caught me, and he wanted me, and he wanted me, and, me, and he said nine years. The, the church have nine years. Nobody knows where the hour. No man knows where the time. Not angels, not even Jesus. Jesus don't know when he's coming back. Only the father knows. Ah, Balaka. Meaning heaven is on his toes. Because the father can say, we're going now. We're returning now. Do you know how many times I'm sure God has wanted to send Jesus back to the earth to end everything? But he looked down and said, how many people will be saved from the church? Let me give them more time. We have, we have seen their type before. Many. Y2K. How many of you remember Y2K? The year 2000. From 1999 to the year 2000. A woman came. There were different rumors. A woman said she saw Angel Mary in the sky. She was bleeding and with her wings. Is it Angel Mary? What they call her? Mary, mother of Jesus. That's the one from her village. The woman's village, not the Mary that is in my Bible. Because the Mary in my Bible is nobody. Mary in the Bible is not special. She was just privileged. Like any one of us can be privileged. That's why the angel of God said to Mary, 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 thou art blessed and highly favored among women. It is favor that separated Mary, not a better right to bear Jesus. So to, to worship Mary is idolatry. Hence the reason why the Bible says in Acts of Apostles chapter 1 and chapter 2, Mary with 119 others making 120 were in the upper room also praying for the, for the who? Holy Ghost. Mary was there praying for Holy Ghost with Jesus' brothers. Mary was also praying for Holy Ghost. If she should be worshipped, why should she be praying for Holy Ghost? She's just flesh and blood human being like you. A regular woman. A regular babe that was blessed and highly favored to do something distinctive through humanity and for humanity. Please, are you understanding me tonight? Nobody knows the that straight away. This was a prophecy for trending. When you prophesy, prophecy is shakes places. Prophets are not loved. Prophets are hated. You are a prophet. Everybody is your fan. You are from the pit of hell. Nine years. Nine years. The church has got nine years. Not me and him. His father's house and himself. His wife, his children, his family. Nine years. 
Nonsense. Oh, yeah, kilo me said 10 years. The church have 10 years. One want to say 9. one want to say 10. And one will come and I say 8 and a half. Very soon. One will say, ah, oh, we have only two months. Jesus is coming summertime. Get your thing ready and it will be coming by air- aircraft. That's what they will say. Or parachute. <clears throat> no man know where they are. Like a thief in the night. Like a thief in the night, Jesus would come. Like a thief. So thief tells you how they are coming. They will write you a letter. Hello, bros. I am arm robber. I will come to your house. Two AK-47. Two pistol. One bazooka. One shakabula. Get ready. I'm coming with a, cat, with a cutlass too. A, a machete. I'm coming with seven boys. One short boy that will throw through the window to open your door. So get ready. We're coming with two egg cars. One will be on the exit of NRA Junction. And one will be on the exit of Akwaku Road Junction. What nonsense. When thief come, in fact, that day you least expect it. They will bang your dog. Bang, bang, bang. When you're... We are armed robbers. We are here. The money of your life. Like a thief in the night. If, if, if the Bible uses arm robbery to describe the coming of Christ, it shows us that it will be unexpected. And nobody alive will ever get that prophecy. Nobody alive, born of woman or spirit, will ever catch that, that vision. It's a lie. Tell that devil to shut up and get off our altar. In fact, not this altar. They can't stand here. If they... Any of you genuine, you are, you, are, you are a prophet. I give you a challenge. Come and stand on this altar. If you can climb here and come down all right, then I will shake your hands and I will kneel down to you to lay your hand on my head. You, you will go cripple. You will go cripple. Dirty prophets in London. You will go cripple. I went for a, 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 a prophetic conference about four or five years ago. Titled The Gathering of the Prophets. One man came there just talking nonsense. I just said, Lord, if this man is truly. This man, if he's not right, I put fire on this altar. Let him not stand. He went on the altar. He shook. Fire, but he came down. He said, Please bring the lecture down. I will preach from the floor. I said, Yes. Light and darkness can't sit on the same place. How can you be dark and sit under my canopy? We don't share canopy together. You, you, you covenant with the devil, I've covenanted with the Lord. You see me, you run. Because canopy cannot, cannot keep devils under his company. If they burn them well, I am throwing challenge. It is time for the Elijah to stand up now. Let the prophets of Baal be differentiated in our nation. If any of you are genuine prophets in this land, I am calling you out. If you know that you are genuine, you have mind, come and climb this altar, Apostolic Movement Church Revival Center. The address is number 121, Broad Street, Dagenham, back in London, RM10 9HP. 247, the door is open. I don't need to be here. If you can climb on this altar and you come down all right, I will say you're a man of God. But if you cannot come down all right, get ready. Ambulance will take you on a wheelchair here. Get off the altar and let people be liberated from slit men who are misleading people. Someone is going online. People cannot, they, they, they should even enter the laptop and sound him. Tell him to, ta, shut up. Ta, Juju is talking to you. And, and God told me, God told me the church only have nine years. The church have what? Which calendar? Which diary did you see? The one your dead father showed you, replicating the light in your dream. Nonsense. Oya Kilome came his own, said the church uh, ten years and Jesus will return. If 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 the Lord re- chooses to tarry, and by ten years he has to return, Oya Kilome will get it for me in ten years time. That's if we, that is even if he's still alive. If he's still alive, because he can't lie against God like that. Listen, let me, let me announce something on the airwave. There is a generation of us God is raising now. We are not afraid of anybody anymore. We are ready for our blood to flow for the kingdom as we stand on truth and righteousness. We have been singing a song all these years. The last, especially the last four years. 
There's an army rising up. Oh, you think it's just a song? No, it's a prophetic word. God, I am one of the army. I'm a general in the spirit. We're here to butcher any fo- Coup d'etat started though. We are removing all of you from office. With your wickedness. Coup d'etat. We come, we shoot. Boy, get out. What says? I am, I am throwing open challenge now. All those prophets, let us meet. Like the days of Elijah, build your altar and build mine. And let the God that answer by fire. And the God that answers by crippling legs and killing your private parts, let him be God. That is where we are going now. I'm not joking. Anywhere I catch false prophets, I will cause his, the person's leg and his private part until he confess. So that the church can be liberated from, listen, professed, prophetic ministry is leading many people into the pit. Depression, stagnation, confusion, bitterness, because someone, listen, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me share something with you. Someone called me from the church three weeks ago. He said, Papa, please pray. I said, what is going on? He said, my father, this was the person, the lady's father says, our father was in the hospital in America, Atlanta. I think it was Atlanta, something like that. He said, the father was in the hospital. I said, what happened to your father? He said, ah, sir. They don't know the man, just one condition, one condition, ended up on um, um, life support and all those things. You know what I said? I said, okay, let's pray to the Lord. I said, so what do you want the Lord to do? You know what she told me? She said, sir, I want you. I know when you pray, the man will do what? He will come out of what? Hospital. He said, I believe in the anointing God has poured on your life. I said, is that so? I said, okay, let your faith make you whole. I said, just lift it. I said, my father in heaven, I bless you. The Lord said, you don't need to talk to me too much. Let me tell you the deep and secret things. The Lord started speaking to me. He took me in a vision. The Lord said, don't pray for the man. I am the one I have called him back. He's not coming out of his, he's dead. So you have to tell her, he's gone. But tell her I love him. So he's coming to me. I've prepared a place, he's coming to me. Tell her, I love him. Do you know how hard you pass that kind of message? To tell someone to start preparing for the death of a loved one in advance. That is what a true prophet is. I said, thus says the Lord, your father is not coming out of hospital. Prepare for his death. Ah, It was hard for the woman. But the woman said, thank you, sir, for telling me the truth. I said, that's what I saw. And that's what the Lord said. Just last week, we were in church here. They dropped a message. Say, tell prophets, our father has, called, has been called on. I told her, congratulations. She said, thank you, sir. When I then spoke to her the next day after the service, after the conference, I spoke to her. She sounded alive. She sounded charged. She sounded her family. Everyone was broken, shattered, and defeated battered and crying but she was sound she was alive i said madam why are you alive she said thank you sir even though the prophecy was heavy it is what is giving me strength now because why god spoke genuinely through you in advance to tell me to prepare for my father's going so i prepared mentally so to me it had gone three weeks ago what if I said, the woman called me and started saying, uh, the woman called me and then I started saying, oh, and I'm shaking like I'm getting conversion, being electrocuted. Then I say, God said, give it 24 hours. Your, hus- your, your, your father will come out of hospital. And she's excited falsely. The father dying would have even broken her more than the father entering the hospital. The father dying would have broken her even more than the father what? Entering hospital. Genuine. If you are a genuine prophet, God will give you. See, prophetic ministry is heavy. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a baby place. 
It's not a baby platform. It's not. Do you know how hard it was for me to tell her? Your father is going. It was hard. But she said, thank you, sir. When she was talking to me, just, um, um, it was two, three days ago. Thank you, sir, for the prophecy of three weeks ago. I prepared in my mind. I prayed for his soul as though he was gone when you told me. Imagine if I had said, there are people who have entered hospital. And I said, no, this one is not unto death. It's com- this one is coming back. Ah, many of you have experienced it here. I said, this person is not dying. Come back today. Don't want, are we, so, don't worry, they're, com- they're coming back home. They'll be discharged in two days, one day, or even today, right now. And they come out immediately. Imagine if I say, oh, the person will come out and the person dies in there. You have therefore damaged the faith of people. That is what the prophetic, mi- that's, that is how sensitive the prophetic ministry is. The church have nine years. Eh? Look at me on your screen, all of you online. The church doesn't have any time. One thing I do know is that the church has no time anymore. And see, many of you waiting for rapture to take place, that triumphant entry, where they, there will be pam 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 Rapture is not until Jesus comes through the sky with angels, with trumpets, the cherubs, the cherubs blowing trumpet and whatnot. No, that's not rapture alone. Rapture takes place ev- as we speak in some people's rapture has taken place. Rapture is that moment you are called home as well. Like the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins, your preparation is what matters to what you define as your rapture. It's appointed unto a man who wants to die. After that, the, that after that, that place after that is rapture. Bam, you are gone. Rapture is that vanishing elevator that takes you from the human form to the celestial form. Rapture is that vanishing elevator that takes you, converts you from the terrestrial to celestial being and body. And there is all two ends to the celestial, dark or light. Eternal life or eternal damnation. You are waiting for rapture. Pam, para, pam, para, pam, para, pam, para, nine years. Let me ask you a question. When I, when I saw, I just, they sent the video to me, I was laughing. I said, see nonsense. Even though you have when I, I say, see, see foolishness. I don't, I'm not moved by their, their, their names or their achievements. I'm moved by people that preach word, word that defies my spirituality. You know what I said to myself? So, is Oya Kilome telling me now that, um, watch this, now listen to me. His, his private jets, he's selling them. His houses, selling them. He wants to now gather the money for the evangelism for his 10 years ministry. So that in 10 years time, Jesus come and take him. Is he selling them? Please, in fact, they are buying more houses. Coronavirus, they are buying more planes. Buying more buses. Ah, will you take them to heaven? Oh, the boy that said nine years, I'm sure he has bought some new, new things for himself. What nonsense. Who are you fooling? You can only fool those that don't know their Bible. See, in fact, the devil knows, the devil knows how to speak English. Very soft. I'm God's head. And I saw the realms of the spirit. And God was talking to me. Nonsense. The dangers of the prophetic. Dangers of prophecy. You'll be, you'll be, you are impressed. You are impressed. Impressed by how, how soft they sound. Eh? The Holy Ghost is not Mr. Soft. It's Mr. Rugged. We have passed the time of softness in the body. We are in a time of ruggedity because of the end time mission of the Antichrist, Antichrist ministry. Be careful of those who take the appearance of light when it's truly the dark. Oh, now you know them straight away. You tell. Michael, don't 
turn the person of the altar. Don't even use your power. You know, some of you, if you are right handed, use your left hand. They're not even worth your right hand. Nonsense. In this ministry, if you are still fooled by like slit men, I won't pray your deliverance. You will go. We teach you, I teach you well. Any prophecy, especially this end times that don't align with, prof- with scripture. Any prophecy. When I prophesied about Donald Trump, everybody was cursing me. Are you a Donald Trump fan? Ah, prophet, what happened? I thought you said Donald Trump will win. I said he will win. Yes, and whether the devil likes it or yes, he won. And in America, they know that he won. 2021 prophecy for Donald Trump, what did I say? After the what? Ridiculed. Because I said I saw him being what? Ridiculed. Even as I speak, I still be ridiculed. After the ridicule, God said, I would justify him and glorify him. You know, I said this thing. Just watch. It's going ridicule now. now. It's getting ridiculed. We don't lie here. We say it how it is. Please, I want you to write down these things. I want to give you four points so that we pray afterwards. And I take some questions. Four points. And what are these four points for? How can prophecies be dangerous? I want to give you four points. How can prophecies be dangerous? I'm giving you four pointers. How can prophecies be dangerous? How can prophecies be dangerous? I'm giving you four pointers. How can prophecies be dangerous? Number one. Receiving prophecies from an unauthorized mouth who is delivering an unauthorized message puts your life in danger. How can prophecies be dangerous? Remember tonight is titled, the message focus word is what? The dangers of prophecies. So how is prophecy dangerous? Or how can the prophetic be dangerous to you? Number one, when you receive prophecies, receiving prophecies from an unauthorized mouth, who is delivering an unauthorized message? Receiving prophecies from an unauthorized mouth, who is delivering an unauthorized message? Prophecies can be dangerous. Number one, when you receive prophecies from an unauthorized mouth, who is what? Delivering to you an unauthorized message. The Bible says in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 37, it says, Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when God commanded it not? Who is he? The word he there is making reference to to if the person is authorized to speak or what or not. Are you listening to me? If the person is authorized to speak or not. Authorized to deliver a message or not. Who is he? Lamentation 337. That what? Say it a thing and it cometh to pass when the Lord what? Commanded it not. The word commanded there is the authoriz- authorization and the pass to speak. Who is he that saith a thing and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Look at Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. I've said it many times. You, sh- you should all know each word in that verse. Very powerful verse. Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. And what see our God now authorized Aaron? And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Aaron was given a divine authorization to be a prophet to Moses. 
You can meet 100 prophets, but if God has not authorized any of them to be your prophets, they will prophet lie to you. They can be genuine, but if they are not designed by God to be thy prophet, there can be 200 genuine prophets, but yet none of them is your prophet. I'm losing you here. There can be 25 prophets in the land, but God has said none of them is your prophet. Your prophet could be located in Kotonu. I have made Aaron thy brother to be thy prophet. I've made Aaron to be thy prophet. Meaning the prophetic ministry is an assignment to humanity. Meaning a prophet is assigned to one human being as well as a whole generation. A prophet is assigned to you. God has, God has a personal prophet for everyone. You can be, listen, listen to me. I, I just call this in the spirit. My God, heavy. You can be under a general prophetic grace, but not receive a personal prophecy. <laughs> because you are not under your prophet. You cannot be under your prophet and not receive a personal prophecy. You cannot be under your prophet and not receive a personal prophecy. I remember Pastor Michael in those days. He wasn't coming to a church. And I had a dream about him. And in the dream, prophetic dream, and I saw in the rest of the I saw a vision about him. His hair were long. He, he weaved his hair. And he was working with some boys like Jaguda in Lutzen Town Center. And I stopped. I said, oh, come here. I looked at him in the dream. What are you doing? Come on, behave yourself. Cut this enough. Hey, pastor, become, become responsible. And this was when he wasn't coming to church. Three, four weeks later, guess who came to church? Jaguda Michael. He came down. And when he came to church, Pastor Michael had, what did he have? He twisted all his head to the back. I had not seen him in two months. The, when I saw him again, following the dream I had, halfway through, the, his, 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 his missing and his absence from church. Everything I saw in the dream was happening. He came to church with his suit, with his suit and his shoe, with his weaved hair, doing like this, like someone that has got springs in the heel and needed deliverance. Thinking I would clap for him. From far, I said, what is this nonsense? Come, what cuts your head? Don't you um, be a pastor? Pastor Michael shook. I said, I, I saw you in a dream. In fact, in fact, it was Mama that spotted him first. Mama said, Prophet, look at your dream. He with her. I said, I'm a prophet. I am his personal prophet. Now, as you, see, write this number two. Your personal prophet, God has assigned him to lead you to your godly destiny. Your personal prophet is, is, is eager to see you fulfill your destiny. He edifies you so that you can grow in your salvation. General prophets will not do that. You can, be a, you can be under a generic prophetic ministration and not get a personal prophecy for your salvation. You can be under a general prophetic ministration and not receive a prophecy for your salvation. When I thought, as all the air, the long air, the, all the long air, I saw him, bam, ah! I said, say this one with this long hair. I said, come here. What is this? And guess what? That period, he was going to another prophet in London. The ones calling themselves Emeritus. Where men are dressing like women. And you're under a prophetic ministry. He was dressing like a woman, weaving his hair. Packing hair anyhow. And he was coming to church doing like this. Like I will, I will, I will also... I said, what is this? I said, why cut your hair? There is nothing wrong in weaving hair. But what message are you sending across? Imagine me coming to church one day with two earrings. And one, one, one tiny one in my nose. And I carry Bible. And I, and I say, lift up your hands, so you people. The Lord is here. The Lord can truly be with me. But the earring has distracted an immature Christian. The hearings has distracted an immature Christian. I've taken their mind to a place where their mind shouldn't be at the time when they should be receiving the word. You are, you, are, you are a prophet. Your wife come to church, her breast, you can see the whole slit there. When she bends, it's like, give me the mangoes. 
That is what we're having in our generation. Love those things. Those kind of pictures used to get 2,000 likes, and that's a pastor's wife. And you are now coming to prophesy to us that God, the church is having nine years. That is why you are seeing nine years. Your wife is blocking your eyes with what she's not meant to block your eyes. Open your eyes in the spirit. Trendy prophet. Someone said online, trendy prophet. I don't want to be your trendy prophet. Uh, my, suit and, my suit and tie will trend. I'm fine. I'm trending like this. Thank you. I'm fine. Mama trends with her dressing. Not the one that she comes to church and all her G-string is showing from the back. What, what's she trying to do? Take you into the Holy Ghost backside or what? Are you listening to me here? Am I teaching you something? Someone sent, asked a question online. How do you know your personal prophet? Ah! That is a powerful question. How do you know your personal prophet? Number one, your personal prophet is particular about your salvation. The prophecies he brings to you edifies your spirituality, not entertains your materialism. Your personal prophet edifies your spirituality and not entertains your materialism. I don't want to give you an ambitious prophecy, but I want to give you a kingdom prophecy. Your personal prophet number two, you will always have encounters about them. Your personal prophets will br bring divine encounters to you in dreams and visions. Some people call me and say, sir, I saw you in my dream. Personal prophets. That's the angel of my ministry using my form to appear to you. Using my form to appear to you. I'm a personal prophet. You don't joke with such people. I've never met Bishop David Oedek in my life. But it's my personal prophet as well. Because I've had dreams with him. He appeared to me in the dream. He'll be talking to me. Write this down. Do this, do this, do this. I get up, I go do it. Everything he says in dream will happen. Just happen in physical. Whoa, I shock. I've had encounters with Apostle John Suleiman in dream. The image. Image. Personal prophet. Babalola. Apostle Babalola. You can bear me witness. Did I know him before? Never knew him. He appeared in the dream to me. I heard the Lord say, this is Apostle Babalola. Go and study him. I said, what? I jumped up. I said, Mama, this is not my... I, she said, let's check Google. I checked. I was shocked to know about that man. I was surprised. You must have encounters with your personal prophets. Meaning the angels of his ministry will take his form. The angels of his ministry will take his form to minister to you. You can be under a generic and a general prophetic ministration, but don't get a personal prophecy for your salvation. Meaning, your personal prophet is particular about your salvation over your carnal life. Over your materialism. Am I communicating tonight? And the Lord said to Moses, number three, how do you know your personal prophet? God will tell you, this man submit to him. And the Lord said to Moses, listen, listen to me. I should write, I should write that point. Now, hear this. Do you know why the Lord had to tell Moses personally that Aaron is his prophet? Because by divine order, how can Moses there be calling Aaron that was underneath him his prophet? So God had to tell him personally. Meaning, your personal prophet will not come in the size you expect. You might be looking at like they call me like the, um, some people were abusing me. Who is this stupid African man telling us that this was when I was prophesying about um, um, Theresa May. When I said, I saw her, God said he's going to remove her from office that year. If she doesn't leave the office, she will die sick in the office. Remember the, dream, the, the, the prophecy? For, was it 2019 prophecy? I received emails and messages everywhere. So when the St. Vincent, um, dead prime minister, that is saying that, um, um, that um, um, I'm, a, I'm a stupid African prophet, does he think it's the first time they've called me stupid African prophet before? They were laughing at me, cursing me, cursing me, cursing me, cursing me, cursing me. That same year, did Theresa May, did she leave office? Oh. Do you remember she was already falling sick and looking sick? Oh. So who is the foolish African prophet? Uh, the ones that are saying uh, nine years, you won't go and call them foolish uh, English ones. Who is leading to foolishness? 
Am, am I communicating? Please follow me tonight. And the Lord said, meaning when your personal prophet is, is sent to you by God or revealed to you by God, it might not be that shape you expect. You might be speaking Patwa, but he speaks Pigeon English from Africa. You might be speaking Pigeon English, but all his God is an Australian, Australian accent. Your personal prophet can be a donkey for a second. Like Balaam. Balaam was about to be struck down by an angel of God. His personal prophet was a donkey that saved him from premature death. And the donkey eyes opened and saw an angel with a sword drawn. And the donkey spoke to Balaam. Do you not see what's ahead of you? And he saved Balaam. Your personal prophet is never, it, most of the time, it won't come from your race, your tongue. It's the least place you least expect God to connect you with. And that's why, the, that's why you need encounters to know your personal prophet. And the Lord, Exodus 7:1, said unto Moses, I have, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy what? Thy prophet. Receiving prophecies from an unauthorized mouth who is delivering an unauthorized message can put your life in danger. That's the first point I said. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 69 and verse 70. Luke chapter 1, verse 69 and verse 70. Verse 69 says, And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant who? David. Look at verse 70. Watch this. And as he spoke by the mouth... As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet, prophets, which have been since the world began. As he spoke, prophets must speak as God has charged them to speak. A prophet speaking out of God's charge and order will be speaking out of line and bring disorder. A prophet speaking out of God's charge or off God's charge and away from God's order we bring disorder into those receiving such messages as he spoke Luke 1 17 as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began I want to prophesy over someone's life here tonight I've been ordered to liberate destinies by the anointing anybody's life who is being damaged and affected by ungodly prophecies whoever prophesied into your life and now your life is you are you are on the wrong path today that prophecy is neutralized and your head disconnect from such un un unauthorized mouth your head disconnect from such unauthorized message that was delivered into your life Amen. in the name of jesus please be seated let's take the remaining three points so we can pray are you being edified so far? Yes, Am I wasting your time? Yes, Have I wasted your time? Yes, May God connect you and keep you connected with your personal prophets. Amen. For those who God has made me their personal prophets, I decree today your light begin to shine. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Number two. How can prophecies be dangerous? How can prophecies be dangerous? How can prophecies be dangerous? Number two. Receiving prophecies without a matured praying life. Receiving prophecies without a matured praying life will bring danger to your life. Receiving prophecies without a matured praying life will bring danger to your life. Don't seek prophecy when you're not matured in prayers. Receiving prophecies without a matured praying life exposes you to dangers in the spirit. Once the enemy knows you've come in contact with knowledge concerning a great future, he will attack you. Why? The enemy's plan is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God's thoughts towards us is what? Peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. 
a hope and a future. So there was one translation that says to give you posterity and hope. Posterity and hope. So when the devil knows you have come in contact with divine knowledge called the prophetic concerning your future, he will attack you. And if you are weak in prayers, you are in for trouble. If you, if you are weak in prayers, you are weak. You are what? You are in. You are in what? You are in for trouble. If you are weak in prayers and you are receiving prophecies, you are in for what? For trouble. When prophecies, listen to me. When prophecies, stroke promises is given, the Lord said, attacks is inevitable. Attack is one of the byproduct of a genuine prophecy. What's a byproduct? What's a byproduct? What's a byproduct? Something that follows. What's it? No. What's a byproduct? What's a byproduct of something? What's a byproduct of a human being? You sure? Can I have a formal definition of the word byproduct? This way you, you are permitted to use your Google. Byproduct. Attacks is the byproduct. One of the byproducts is one of the byproducts of a genuine prophecy. Byproduct. Byproduct. What, what, what is it? It is the secondary product of something. An unintended. An unintended but inevitable. So something that's unintended but inevitable. Consequence. Consequence of hearing a prophecy and you're not praying is attack. Something that's inevitable when you receive a genuine prophecy about your future is attacks. You are going to be a financial billionaire, bam, you can't even afford 10 pounds anymore. The enemy knows you have come in contact with divine information concerning your destiny. So the enemy's plan by attacking you is to kill your faith in believing that you are what God said you will be. Or you enter what God wants you to enter, which is the fulfillment and performance of the prophetic. Are you understanding me? Are you, are you all catching something tonight? When prophecies stroke promises is given, the Lord said, attacks is inevitable. If what I went on to say, attack is one of the byproducts of prophecies. Now, hear this. When the angel of God brought a prophetic message to Mary about giving birth. Now, please, listen to me. How is it possible that Mary, or how would Mary have gone to explain to Joseph that a ghost came and made her pregnant? And the ghost came and romanced her and her belly rose. That she, number two, how is she going to explain to her father, her mother, her uncles, her in laws that she's pregnant but still a virgin? You see, the promise of Jesus put Mary in an inevitable attack. <laughs> I'm opening your eyes to something now. How would, how would Mary explain? That's why the angel of God had to, also, had to also appear to who? Joseph. Because the Bible says, and Joseph was reconsidering marrying Mary. And the Lord said to him, don't do that thing you want to do. This is my work. That was what kept Joseph grounded to marry Mary. Imagine you are, you, are, you are going through courtship with a lady. The lady just come with six months pregnancy. And tell you, honey, I know you want to marry me in four months' time. But three months ago, the Lord appeared to me and said, I'm going to give birth to the Jesus of 2021. Eh? How do you want to explain that? Prophecies produce an inevitable attack. Mary became a mockery. Because she was seen as a virgin. Suddenly she's carrying pregnancy. Who will understand that? How will, you, how will she explain to her own father how much more the man she's meant to marry and her in-laws? And then the, 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 the priest in the synagogue. Are you, 
understanding me? Any prophecy that you've received from God that hasn't yet exposed you to attack or made you vulnerable to attack, that prophecy is from hell. That is why you must be prayerful. Receiving prophecies without a matured praying life would expose you to arrows. It will expose you to arrows. A matured praying life is pivotal to fulfillment of prophecy. When you receive prophecy, you have your role to play in sin fulfilled by getting on your knees and being prayerful. Pray. You have, when prophecy comes to you, you have your own role to play to see prophecy birthed and established. And it's called the place of prayer. If you don't pray, prophecies can be delayed, frustrated, or even aborted. So instead of chasing prophecies, if you're, instead of chasing prophecies, chase and gr chase the place of prayer. Grow. Grow. Mature. An immature praying man only ruptured only ruptures a promising future. An immature praying man will only rupture a promising future. An immature praying man only ruptures a promising what? Future. You want to rupture your future quickly? Stop praying. Don't pray. Don't talk to God. Keep quiet. Close your mouth. You see, you rupture your future. When you receive, number two, I said, Receiving prophecies without a matured praying life. Without a matured praying life. Is dangerous to you in life. Mary received prophecy. Mary received prophecy. It exposed that to attack straight away. How would, she, how would Mary, the mother of Jesus... Start explaining to the world that it was a ghost that made her pregnant. And she's pregnant, but yet still a virgin. How does that work? Medically and biologically, it does not stand. You cannot be a virgin and still be, you cannot be pregnant and still be a virgin at the same time. Anybody who is been facing a form of temptation and tribulation because of a prophetic word that's meant to get you to a, that's meant to get you to a godly destination today, I pray that the grace to come out on the other side fulfilled in that prophecy, that grace comes upon you in the name of Jesus. Your prefer the prophecy of God over your life will not fail. It will not be delayed. Amen. It shall not be frustrated in the name of Jesus. Two more points I will pray tonight. And number three, I said, the question now is, how can prophecies be dangerous to us? Number one, I said, receiving prophecies from a, an unauthorized mouth. Who is delivering what? An unauthorized what? Message. Message. Number two, I said, receiving what? Prophecies without a what? A matured praying life. And now, let's write down the third point. Number three, how can prophecies be dangerous to a person? Receiving prophecies without maturity in the world. Receiving prophecies without maturity in the world. Receiving prophecy without maturity in the world. Receiving prophecies without maturity in the world. Receiving prophecies without maturity in the world. In the word of God. If we return back to Daniel chapter 2, verse 22, which is the keynote Bible verse for the, today's subject um, matter. If you read Daniel chapter 2, verse 21 and verse 22, it says, And he changed the times and the seasons, verse 21. He removed kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know what understanding. Look at verse 22. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth in him. Without the word of God, the light cannot dwell in you. The word. John 1, verse 3 and 4. It talks about the life 
and the light, which then shine in darkness in verse 5. But in verse 1 of John 1, it says, In the beginning was the world. And the world was what? With God. Was, was God. And the world was with God. Mm. Was God and was God. I listen to me. Then verse 3 and verse 4 talks about that word being life. And that life being light to men. In John 1, 4, in him was life and the life was the light of men. Are you seeing this? Stop seeking prophecies everywhere if you are immature in the world. Hmm. That promising prophecy could become your casket to a premature life. Premature death. Receiving prophecies without maturity in the world exposes you to dangers in life. He revealed the deep and secret things. In Daniel 2, 22. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth in him. Now look at what the Lord said. I, I wrote this down. The Lord said, you cannot be shallow in the world and undo deep things of the spirit. You cannot be shallow in the word of God and undo the deep things of the spirit. He revealed deep. Daniel was grounded in the word. Your depth in revelational download is determined by your download of the word. It is the word you have downloaded that determines your access to revelational download. You cannot be shallow in the word and download the deep things of the spirit. You cannot be shallow in the word of God and download the deep things of the spirit. The earthworm and the fish that swims on the shallow end of the ocean is different from the ones that goes at the deep end of the ocean. The places where whales used to go and sleep, you can't see mackerel going there. Mackerel can't stay where whales. In fact, whales comes out, whales, they come out from the deep end of the ocean to hunt, to feed, get fresh air, get sunlight, and go back to the depth. Of the ocean. Many of you want deep revelation, but you don't want deep, deep what? Deep analysis of the world. Stop getting prophecies when you are still shallow in the world. Stop looking for prophecies up and down when you are still shallow in the world. In fact, the word of God is the sure word of prophecy. The depth, the deeper you go in the world, you come in contact with assurance and security that God's word never fails. A prophet can prophesy only in parts. A prophet can prophesy and it fails because the Bible says prophecy too also fails. Prophecy will fail. It's there. But only the word of God stands forever. So what you need as your security in the spirit is the word of God. For we, for we have now a sure word of prophecy. We have now a sure word of prophecy. Am I communicating here? Am I breaking this down? Stop seeking prophecy when you are not mature in the world. The Lord said, you cannot undo the deep things of the spirit when you are still shallow in the world. Some people don't know John 3.16, but they are coming to tell me God said, God... Go, go on, go on, tell me what KJV says about John 3.16 first. God said, and you don't know, you, you, don't, you don't know John 3.16. Psalm 23 verse 1, you don't know. The Lord is my shepherd, you don't know. But you are telling me that the shepherd spoke to you. How can you know? <laughs> it is the spirit of God witnesses to our spirit. What brings witness between yourself and the spirit of God is the light in you, which, is, which comes from the world. The world. May you grow in the world in the name of Jesus. And last, last point tonight. Number four. I said I was giving us four points. How? I said how is how can prophecies be dangerous to you? How can prophecies be dangerous to you? Number four. Receiving prophecies without first seeking the spirit of discernment. Receiving prophecies without first seeking the spirit 
of discernment. Receiving prophecies without first receiving the gift called the spirit of discernment. If you don't have the spirit of discernment and you are chasing prophecies up and down, you'll be exposed to spiritual, physical, and all sort of danger. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 to 14, it reads, and I quote, verse 13, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Look at verse 14. But strong men, sorry, but strong meat, Hebrews 5, 14, but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil able to exercise the Lord said discernment is your exercise tool in the spirit to differentiate good from evil Light from darkness, prophecy from prophet lies, prophetic from prophetic. I'll break it down. The Lord said, discernment, your discernment, the spirit of discernment, the spirit of discernment is your exercise tool. Remember, if let me read Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14 again. It says, Hebrews 5 14 says, But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age. The sermon brings you to a place of maturity as well. That are full of age, even those who by reason of their use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. Then the Lord said, Write this down, son. I wrote it down. He said, Discernment is your exercise tool. Discernment is that tool that you exercise in the spirit to differentiate good from evil. Discernment, when you have discernment and you go to a place where the, the aura is evil, you will pick it even from the door. Before you get there, you discern. Someone shake your hand, you discern. Even by, there is a smell people carry, you know, you discern. Good or evil. It's not everybody you allow into your house. In those days, a woman came to my house. I didn't, dis I didn't discern quickly. And she, she wasn't black. She was a white lady. So it's not, a, it's not a black thing, a black witch thing. The enemy can use anybody. She came. After she sat in my house, what did she do? She looked at my son and fired him arrow. That time, JJ was like two years old, three years old. Fired him. Pow! Immediately, my son was hit with high, high temperature, volcanic temperature. And I looked at her. I looked at my son. I said, something's not right here. So when she shook my hand, she wanted to go. She now shook my hand. As soon as she shook my hand, I called the message. I said, ah, I allowed the wrong person into my house. She now shook my hand. When she shook my hand, she turned my palm indirectly and quickly took her hands off. Then she saw my palm. Then she went like this. She said, ah, you are a man of God. Many are faking it. You are real. A white woman. Am I lying? In front of people. I said, what did you come to do in my house? Because that was in my early days of ministry. I was using my house for house fellowship. My early days of ministry, we were still, we were still meeting in community centers. We were still meeting in community centers. She said, you are a man of God. She looked at my hand. Took Took hands off and looked at me. Ah, she said, you are a man of God. You are, you, are, you are real. So when she left, I went to my son. My son was hot. Mama says, it was very hot. In like two, a two minutes encounter. Bam! I, took, I said, take him upstairs. So I went upstairs. I left my mom with the people, the rest of the um, people that came for the fellowship in those days in the house. I took Jeff, my, my son upstairs. And I said, Father, in the name of Jesus. Where did this come from? The Lord said, that woman. That same woman that shook your hand, she fired your son arrow. You went, you shot your discerning, your, your discerning spirit. I said, I'm sorry. I said, wake up and be careful next time because it could be too late before you realize. I said, Father, 
send this back to the person. Do you know that the next morning, I will tell you, I was going to the shop. I saw this woman almost dead on the street. That arrow hit her back. Boom! That's the same hour I sent it back to her. And she saw me coming. They were rushing her to hospital. They were checking. Oh, they were carrying her. I looked at her. I just kept walking. I said, you are finished. I, 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 I didn't see her again. It's like she even moved out of the town, the whole town completely. She left. She ran. Some of you are not decent. Someone will even come to us, pick up your pants because she's your girlfriend and wear your pants. Touch your pants, touch your bra. You start having issue bearing children. Right? Having issue getting married. Some people in the town center, you allow people to touch your children's head. Look at me there, please. Concentrate. I want to talk to the people online too. Then what are they doing with the side view? Don't allow people to touch your children's head. Be discerned. Not every hand is clean. Even as a pastor, as a prophet, as an apostle, if God does not tell me to lay hands on people, I don't do it. Because that time is flesh and show of I am your pastor. You don't just lay hands on people's head. You understanding me? Discernment, the Lord said, is your exercise tool. Discernment, the Lord said, it is your exercise tool to differentiate good from evil. Write that down. Let me give you another one. The Lord said, to exercise, to differentiate light from darkness. That's how you know true angels when they appear to you. You know, People that are false prophets, they come with prophetic regalia, but they are from the, the priest of the priest and priestess of, of Baal. Light from evil. Now, write this one. This is where it got very, very intense. Prophecy, which is to prophesy, to see and prophesy. Prophecy meaning P R O P H E I F N S E E. Prophecy from prophelize. Because a true prophet sees what God is about to do, then prophesies. But when they don't see, they lie. Yeah? Prophecy, P R O P H E hyphen S E E. Prophecy from prophet lies. And lastly, this is heavy. The prophetic. P-R-O-P-H-E-T-I-C, which we all know is the genuine one. The prophetic from the prophetic. P-R-O-P-H-E-T-I-T-H-I-C-K. The prophetic, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-I-C, that's the prophetic, from the prophetic. P-R-O-P-H-E-T-H-I-C-K. The prophetic from the prophetic. It is discernment that helps you differentiate them. Prophetic is the flow of the Spirit of God. The, when the prophetic mantle is in operation, it's speaking to people. That's a prophetic operation. But prophet, prophetic is what brings people in a place of confusion. It clouds them. Their life becomes thickened with rubbish. When you call someone a thick brain, it means they lack understanding or the ability to understand. Not so. So when you are not under the prophetic, you'll be under a ministration that lands you in a place where you can't understand what was being said. You are confused instead of getting direction. Let's rise up and pray. Before we pray, I'm going to end by saying this. First John 4, 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. First John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Lift up your hands wherever you are, physically or virtually, and begin to say, Father. Four prayer points were taken according to the point. Someone say, Father. 
connect me with my personal prophet. Someone say, Father, my connection to this grace will continue to deliver to me to deliver. divine guidance to my godly destination. So many of you, God has made me a personal prophet to you. Exodus 7.1 I have made thee a God to, to Pharaoh. This was God talking to Moses. And I have made Aaron thy brother, thy prophet. Meaning Moses was, Aaron was Moses' personal prophet. You can't be in contact with your personal prophet and not get divine direction to a personal destiny. You can be under the ministration of 200 prophets, but because they are not your personal prophets, you will get general prophetic flow, but not a personal prophecy for your personal life. You're going to say, Father, Father by, the by the reason of my connection, my connection to this prophetic altar, to this prophetic by the reason of my connection, of my connection to, this to this prophetic platform. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord may, I may I continue to enjoy, to enjoy and gain unlimited access, gain unlimited unrestricted, access unrestricted access, unrestricted access to prophetic words, prophetic, words, prophetic, charge, prophetic charge, and prophetic guidance, and prophetic guidance to my prophetic destiny. My prophetic Lift your destiny. voice up and begin to pray. You have two minutes. Whatever you are, begin to pray. By the reason of my connection to this prophetic altar, for those who God has made Apostle John Enuma your personal prophet, by the reason of my connection to this prophetic altar, Lord, as I pray, oh Lord, may I continue to enjoy prophetic guidance, prophetic leading, prophetic charge, prophetic direction to my prophetic destiny. I will not miss it, oh God. Lord, put timely prophetic word into the mouth of my personal prophet into the mouth of your prophet over my life into the mouth of the servant of God you have placed on my life Apostle John Enuma Lord put in his mouth a, a truthful spirit not a lying tongue begin to pray because the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 22 how a lying spirit entered the mouth of 400 prophets and only prophet Micaiah one prophet was the only one with the right spirit begin to say Lord put a continuous spirit of truth in the mouth of my personal prophet to speak me to speak my life into the fullness of God's knowledge for me to speak my life into God's plan for me to speak my life into the materialization of God's intention for me begin to pray begin to pray you have 10, ten more seconds pray 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 may I continue to enjoy prophetic direction and prophetic guidance there shall be no prophetic omission when it comes to my life, when it comes to information for my destination. There shall be no prophetic omission, Lord. This is my personal prophetic ground. Lord, let there be prophetic release, uh, prophetic word and charge uh, from divinity for my humanity to take me to a place where I'm a kingdom entity. Begin to pray. Ten more seconds, ten more seconds. The name of Jesus and I pray for you that because you have genuinely prayed I speak into your life that the word that will be coming from this altar would come with precision divine direction and godly ordination for your destiny in the name of Jesus Amen now second prayer point Receiving prophecies without a mature praying life. You're going to say, Father, help me grow in my praying life. Give me appetite to pray. Let the praying man to fall on me. Lift your voice and begin to pray. My Father, my Father, in the name of Jesus, as I begin to pray, Lord, increase my appetite to pray. Make me hunger and long for prayer. Let the mantle for prayer rest on me. Let the mantle for prayer reside in me let it let it invade my passion 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 lord let me be passionate for prayer let me be passionate for prayer 
Lord, let me be passionate for prayer. Lord, make me hunger for prayer. You said we should pray without ceasing, Jesus. You said the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous of village much. Any man that prays, that fails to pray, only prays to fail. Lord, help me. Help me, help me. Let the mantle of prayer fall on 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 me. Pray, 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 pray. Let my appetite be wet for prayer. Wet my appetite for prayer, oh God. In the name of Jesus. From this day, I prophesy that you begin to pray hours non-stop in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will pray until something happens in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, third prayer point. Based on the point number three, I gave this prof receiving prophecies without maturity in the world exposes you to dangers. You're going to say, Father, help me grow in the world. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, give me insight into the world like never before. Help me mature. Help me mature. Help me grow in the world. Help me grow in the word of God. Help me grow in the world. Help me grow in the world. I want to grow. I refuse to be a babe in the world. Help me grow in the word of God. Because when you are shallow in the word of God, you cannot be, you cannot be able to undo the deep things of the spirit. Only matured men, men who are deep into the world, can undo the deep things of the spirit. Lord, help me mature. Help me grow in the word. Help me grow in the word of God. Help me grow in the word of God. Help me grow, help me grow, help me grow. Help me grow. In the word of God. Help me grow, oh God. Help me grow in the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy now your insight into the word of God. It increases today. Amen. The grace to get revelation when you read scripture, receive it now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And our fourth prayer point, which is the last prayer point tonight. It says, receiving prophecies without first seeking the spirit of discernment exposes you to what? Dangers. The Bible says in Hebrews 5.14, But strong meat belong to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. 1 John 4.1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. 1 John 4.1, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world, into the world. I'm going to pray. Father, as I pray tonight, bless me with the spirits of discernment. See, for Solomon to fulfill a prophetic destiny, he asked God for discernment. You can't fulfill a prophetic destiny without the spirit of discernment. He said, Oh Lord, make me discern that I will be able to lead these great people aright. aright. These are your great people. You can't fulfill a great destiny, a prophetic destiny, without discernment. Someone say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Open your mouth and holler, my father, my father. My father, my father. As I begin to pray. As I begin to oh, pray. Lord. Someone say, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Bless me with the spirit of discernment. Bless me with the spirit of discernment. Open your mouth and fire that prayer where you are. If Solomon could ask for the spirit of discernment, how much more you? You cannot fulfill a prophetic destiny, a great destiny, without first receiving a spirit of discernment. Without discernment, you will not be able to differentiate good from evil, light from darkness, prophecies from prophet lies, prophetic from the prophetic. You will be able to, 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 to differentiate evil spirit from godly spirit, demonic spirit from godly ministry spirit. You won't be able to differentiate God sent servants, which are prophets of God, from false prophets. You better begin to pray for yourself. Lord, I ask for the spirit of discernment. I ask for the spirit of discernment. I ask for the spirit of discernment. I ask for the spirit of discernment, oh God.
First King 3 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding how to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy great people? Lord, bless me with the spirit of discernment. You better pray for yourself. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I prophesy today that you begin to walk in a new dimension of the sun. Amen. You will differentiate good from evil on the spot. Amen. From afar, you will differentiate light from darkness in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not be engulfed or swept away or your foot taken by false prophets who the Bible tells us has invaded the earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be as the Lord liveth. In Jesus' most precious name.